Hey, welcome back to the Nico BBQ channel. And I played through a bunch of Mario games and figured out which power up is the worst one in every single game. So let's check it out. With only three power ups to choose from, the original Super Mario Bros. kinda ties our hands right now. We have to choose between the Mushroom, the Fire Flower, and the Star Man. Obviously, out of those three, the worst one has to be the mushroom, but dang, it kinda hurts to choose a power up that's like the staples of the Mario franchise. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, I'm sorry mushroom. And if you're angry that I picked the mushroom, I bet you're even going to be angrier when you'll see my pick for Super Mario Bros. The Lost Level. The sequel to this game introduces one new thing that the original didn't have, the poison mushroom. Now I hear you typing, Nico, this is not a power up, it's a power down or whatever. Listen up, the first time I hit that block and saw this mushroom, I was curious and wanted to touch it and see what it would do, and it killed me. So yeah, technically this is not a power up, but it's still my choice, okay? This is my list, you can go complain down there, I'm not even gonna read it. Super Mario Bros. 2 only has two different power-ups, the Mushroom and the Star Man. But for this game, the Mushroom actually increases your maximum health points, so it's pretty cool. The Star Man, on the other hand, is pretty hard to collect, as you need to touch five cherries in order to make it appear. And for what? To touch enemies and kill them? <sighs> The enemies in Super Mario Bros. 2 are so dumb and easy to beat, and it's way more fun to pick them up and throw them at each other. Go away, Starman, I don't wanna play with you. Super Mario Land on the Game Boy also only has three power ups to choose from, and just like the original Super Mario Bros. for NES, I'm going to have to go with the Super Mushroom, because it's the only one that actually doesn't particularly change you. Like, you get taller and you get an extra hit point, but that's about it. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to try to refrain from always picking the mushroom in the future games when possible, because if I don't, this list will kind of be boring. Super Mario Bros. 3 introduced a whole bunch of cool power ups, and then there's the frog suit, which, don't get me wrong, actually looks super cool, but that's pretty much all it's got for it. The frog suit allows you to swim super fast underwater, and that's kinda cool. But how many underwater levels are there in Super Mario Bros. 3? Well, I don't know, but there's far less than non-underwater ones. And when you're out of the water with the frog suit, well, you walk like this. Ugh, okay, I'm slow, I'm clunky, yeah. You know what, a power-up that's only good in certain levels and is pretty bad in others is definitely a crappy one. Super Mario World is also a game that introduced amazing power-ups like the Feather Cape. I mean, with this thing equipped, you can fly all over the world and you don't have to worry about anything. But there's another power-up allowing you to fly in the game, the Pea Balloon. Yeah, this one is pretty dumb. It inflates Mario and turns him into a balloon and then you can go up until time runs out and you just fall back down. Seriously, this item is complete garbage. It only appears in a few levels and that's actually a good thing. I don't want to see it. I know I said I was going to try to avoid picking the mushroom as my worst bar up, but Super Mario Land 2 6 golden coins kind of forces me to do so. The game only has 4 bar ups and the exclusive one is the bunny ear, which is amazing. And then the fire flower is kind of cool. The star makes you invincible and then there's the mushroom, yeah. I simply picked this one because it's underpowered compared to the other three. Sorry. Super Mario 64 contains a few power ups and they're typically caps that Mario puts on his head to unlock new abilities. There's the metal cap which turns Mario invincible and allows him to walk underwater. Then there's the wing cap which allows Mario to fly in the sky. And then there's the vanish cap which turns you invisible and allows you to go through some boot walls. Woo! Yeah, I think we can all agree that this one is not the most interesting. It is a bit underused in the game, and I think that's actually a good thing, because it's not very fun. Sadly, Super Mario Sunshine doesn't feature that many power ups as this game is all about flood and spraying some water all over the place. Because of that, I'll have to pick the 1-Up Mushroom as the worst power up because 
Like, it's the only one! <laughs> New Super Mario Bros. DS really wanted me to love the Mega Mushroom, featuring it in the trailers, on the cover, and even in the very first level. And don't get me wrong, it's actually super cool to be a giant Mario running around and destroying everything on your path. But it is so useless! The Mega Mushroom can only be used in a handful of levels, and even there, you can actually skip it and the level won't be much more difficult. It's a cool idea, just not executed quite well. And while we're on the topic of bad ideas, Super Mario Galaxy actually decided to introduce one that's impossible to control properly. The Spring Mushroom is really funny looking and allows you to jump super high, sure, but it comes at the price of being a pain in the butt to control, with Mario bouncing every two seconds and on every surface he touches, completing levels with this thing is a nightmare. Out of all the new power-ups introduced in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, I tend to find the Ice Flower to be the least useful. At least for me, like, it's cool to freeze enemies, but it's way better to burn and defeat them with a fire flower. And some enemies you cannot even freeze, so that kinda sucks. And in this game, there's an even better version of the power up in the form of the penguin suit. So, yeah, the normal ice flower is not really good. And I guess that's why it was removed in the sequel, New Super Mario Bros. 2, which instead introduced a bunch of cool power ups, like the tanuki leaf and the gold flower. But it also brought back a crappy power-up from the past, the Mega Mushroom. Appearing only in a couple levels, this thing is still as crappy as it was before, because you can only have it for a very limited amount of time and you actually never need it. Plus, if you had a cool power-up before you grab the Mega Mushroom, well, you lose it afterwards. What a lame power up. Super Mario Galaxy 2 introduced a few new power ups, and some of them were actually for my boy Yoshi. And you know what? The bulb berry is actually kinda bad. This power up turns Yoshi into a flashlight that can make floors and walls appear. And that's really all it does. It reveals invisible platforms for a very limited amount of time. Out of the few levels where you use it, it's actually completely useless. So yeah, not my favorite one. New Super Mario Bros. U didn't introduce that many new power ups, but the deluxe version actually included one that is so cringe that I absolutely have to have it on this list. The Switch port sacrificed Blue Toad to the gods in order to get Toadette, which is actually a cool pick, but then they also introduced a power up that only Toadette can obtain, which is a bit odd. The Super Crown is an exclusive power up and when Toadette gets it, she turns into Peachette, which is probably the dumbest idea ever. Look at this fool! It's just a reskin of Princess Peach, but with a different dress. Sure, being Peachette has a lot of mobility advantages, but a power up that can only be used by one single character is pretty bad in my opinion. There were only a few new power ups introduced in Super Mario 3D Land, and to be fair, they're not that bad. The boomerang flower is kinda useful, and so is the tanuki leaf. For that reason, I think I'm going to have to default back to the mushroom for this one, as it's not really useful. Especially considering that in this game, if you are small Mario and you die, well, you come back to life as tall Mario, thus completely defeating the point of the mushroom altogether. Super Mario 3D World has a weird new power up that's only useful in a few levels. The Double Cherry actually started off as a weird glitch during development and Nintendo ended up using it in the final game. I'm not gonna say they shouldn't have, but let's be real, this power up is only there for the meme. In what universe is controlling four Marios at once good game design? None! It's fun to use, but only for a few seconds making it a power up that's kinda bad. Super Mario Odyssey doesn't feature that many power ups, as it's more about capturing enemies instead. In fact, I don't think there's a single power up besides the heart that gives you extra health, and this is a kinda cool one, but I guess it being the only power up I can think of in this game, well, it's also the worst one. 
Uh, Bowser's Fury pretty much reuses all power-ups from Super Mario 3D World minus a few ones and to be fair they're all pretty useful in their own way whether it's to reach new areas or to hit blocks and stuff. I think I'm forced to say that the Mushroom is the worst one and the reasoning is the same as Mario 3D Land if you die as small Mario, you come back as tall Mario, defeating the whole idea behind it. Alright, so what do you think? Am I right? Am I wrong? Let me know in the comment section down below. And that's gonna be it for me. See ya!